Hello grade 12s and welcome to this lesson on exploring exponential functions. Let's join Omashni as she plots a few exponential functions and draws conclusions about the effects of the a and q values in the functions. First we need to decide on a b value to use. I'll choose b equal to 2. So the parent function we are working with is y equals 2 to the power of x. We want to see what happens to the graph as we change the a value in the family of functions y equals ab to the x plus q. So throughout the investigation, we'll keep the q value equal to 0. Here is the parent graph y equals 2 to the power of x. In this series, we have seen the effect of the a value on other graphs. Can you make a conjecture about the effect of A on this graph? When we change the parent graph of y equal to sine x to get the graph of y equal to 2 sine x, the graph was stretched vertically away from the x-axis. This stretch was caused by using an A value of 2. So we should find that the A value has the same effect on the exponential graph. We should find that the a value stretches the parent graph away from the x-axis by a factor of a. Or it could also pull the parent graph toward the x-axis by a factor of a. Let's check whether this is what happens to the graph. Here is a table of values for the parent function y equals 2 to the power of x. Let's add another column to the table to work out the y values of the function y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x. So we can take each y value for the parent function and multiply it by 3 to get the y value for the new function. Let's see what values we'll get. A sixteenth times 3 is 3 sixteenths. An eighth times 3 is 3 eighths. A quarter times 3 is 3 quarters. Then here we'll have 3 halves. Then 3 followed by 6, then 12, then 24, then 48. Looking at the table, we can see that the x coordinates for both graphs have stayed the same. The parent graph's y coordinates have increased by a factor of 3. So the parent graph should stretch vertically by a factor of 3 to form the new graph. Let's sketch the graph and see whether this is what happens. The point negative 4, 3 sixteenths is about here. Negative 3, 3 eighths is here. Negative 2, 3 quarters. Negative 1, 3 halves, 0, 3, 1, 6, 2, 12, 3, 24, and 4, 48 here. Then I can join these points to get the graph. Now let's compare this graph with the parent graph. Our conjecture was right. The graph has stretched vertically away from the x-axis by a factor of 3. Look at the y-intercepts. 0, 1 on the parent graph has become 0, 3 on the new graph. So the y-intercept of 3 is the same as the value of a for the new graph. This is an interesting change from the other families of graphs we have studied. With the other graphs, Changes to the a value in the formula do not affect the y-intercept. Here, it is different. We will look at this again later in the lesson. For x equal to 3, there is a y value of 8 on the parent graph and a y value of 3 times 8, which is 24, on the new graph. So the point 3, 8 has been stretched vertically to become the point 3, 24. The asymptote has not moved. It remains at y equal to 0 for both graphs. So it seems that the a value does not affect the asymptote. We could test another value of a greater than 1, 
but I will leave that to you. You should find that for any a greater than 1, the a value causes the graph to stretch vertically by a factor of a. Let's consider an a value that is still positive, but is less than 1. How will this affect the parent exponential graph? If we use what we have seen with other functions, we should find that the graph shrinks or pulls toward the x-axis vertically by a factor of a. Let's use an a value of one-third. The new equation will be y equal to a third times 2 to the power of x. I will draw this graph onto the same set of axes as the parent graph so that we can compare the two graphs. Here is the parent graph and here is the graph of y equal to a third times 2 to the power of x. The graph has been pulled vertically toward the x-axis. At the point where x is equal to 0, the y-coordinate is 1 for the parent graph, but a third for the new graph. At x equal to 3, the y-value on the parent graph is 8, but on the new graph, the y-value is 8 divided by 3. So the y-values are a third smaller on the new graph. In other words, they have decreased by a factor of a third, and this causes the parent graph to shrink vertically toward the x-axis. Compare the two graphs with each other. As before, the y-intercept is the same as the a-value in the formula, so it seems that the a-value determines the y-intercept. But we need to check that when we work with other a-values in the formula as well. The asymptote is still at y equal to 0. So far, we have only used a base value of 2 and tested the effect of different positive a values. We tested the effect of 3 and the effect of a third. You will need to test some other positive values of a for yourself. Now we can generalize the effect of a on the parent graph of y equals 2 to the x. For a greater than 1, the parent graph is stretched vertically away from the x-axis by a factor of a. For a between 0 and 1, the parent graph shrinks vertically toward the x-axis by a factor of a. It is pulled towards the x-axis. If you test this idea for other values of b, the base, that are greater than 1, you will find that the a value has the same effect on their graphs. For example, if b is 3 or 4, you will find that a still has the same stretching or shrinking effect on the parent graph. But we need to check whether a will still have the same effect if we use base values that are greater than 0 but less than 1. Let's use a base value of half to see what happens. So the parent function becomes y equals a half to the power of x. As we saw in the previous lesson, this parent graph is a reflection about the y-axis of the parent graph of 2 to the power of x. If we use a table of values for this function, this is what we'll get. For the x values greater than 1, we get fraction values for y. For the negative x values, we get y values greater than 1. The a value for this function is 1. Now let's change the a value to 3. So the new function is y equals 3 times a half to the power of x. Let's make another column in the table for our new y values. Each new y value is 3 times the old y value. So we'll get 48 here, 24 here, 12 here, then 6 here, 3 here, followed by 3 halves, then 3 quarters for this one, 3 eighths here, and then 3 sixteenths for this one. Plotting these points and then joining them gives us this graph. 
Now let's compare this to the parent function of y equal to a half to the power of x. The new graph is formed by stretching the parent graph vertically away from the x-axis. The y-coordinates of all the points in the graph have been increased by a factor of 3. If we make a equal to one third, we get the function y equals a third times a half to the power of x. We will find that each of the y values is decreased by a factor of one third. So the y coordinates of all the points on the graph are decreased by a factor of a third, causing the parent graph to shrink vertically towards the x-axis. These graphs show us that for a b value that is between 0 and 1, the effect of a is the same as for a b value greater than 1. The a value stretches or shrinks the parent graph vertically in the same way. So far, we've considered values of a that are positive. To see what happens when a is negative, I'm going to go straight to the graphs without looking at the table of values. You should check the table of values and more examples of graphs for yourself. Let's use a base of 2 again. When a is negative 1, the equation of the graph is y equals negative 2 to the power of x. So each y value on the parent graph is multiplied by a negative 1. And the new graph is a reflection of the parent graph about the x-axis. This graph is a reflection about the x-axis of the graph of y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x. And this graph here is a reflection about the x-axis of the graph of y equals a third times 2 to the power of x. If we compare these three graphs with a negative a value, we can see that this one is the reflection of the parent graph. This one has stretched that reflection vertically away from the x-axis by a factor of 3. This one has shrunk the reflection towards the x-axis by a factor of a third. We can generalize this by saying that for negative a values, an a value between negative 1 and 0 will cause the reflection of the parent graph to shrink vertically towards the x-axis. An a value of less than negative 1 will stretch the graph vertically away from the x-axis. We have tested this for b equal to 2. But if you test other b values, you will find that negative a values have the same effect on them. So far, we have looked at several graphs to see what the effect of the a value is on exponential functions of the form y equals a times b to the x plus q. But throughout the investigation, we have kept q equal to 0. If we change the q value of this function, what effect do you think it will have on the parent graph? In all the other graphs we have studied, the q value has shifted the parent graph up or down by q units. This is also true for the exponential function. Have a look at the following graphs. They all have an a value of 1, but different q values. The one in the middle is the parent graph, y equals 2 to the power of x. It has a y-intercept of 1, and it has an asymptote on the x-axis, where y equals 0. Here, the parent graph has shifted up by 3 units to make this one that intersects the y-axis at 0, 4. It has an equation of y equals 2 to the power of x plus 3. The asymptote has also shifted up by 3 units and lies on the line y equals 3. And to get this graph, the parent graph has shifted down by 1 unit. It intersects the y-axis at 0, 0. It has an equation of y equals 2 to the power of x minus 1. The asymptote has also shifted down by one unit and lies on the line y equals negative 1. Have a look at these graphs where we changed the a value. The y-intercept was affected by the value of a. 
but the asymptote was not affected. On these graphs, we changed the Q value. This shifted the whole graph Q units up or down. The y-intercept shifts Q units up or down from the point 0, 1. The change in Q also affects the asymptote. The new asymptote lies on the line where y equals the Q value. We haven't investigated the effects of Q on all the different parent graphs with different values for the base B. You need to do this for yourself. Now we can return to what we noticed about the A value affecting the y-intercept. If we consider a graph such as y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x plus 4, can we predict what the y-intercept of this graph will be? Well, the y-intercept is at the point where x equals 0. So y is 3 times 2 to the 0 plus 4, that's 7. It seems that the y-intercept can be found by adding the a value and the q value. Have a look at the graph of this function. It does have a y-intercept of 7. You need to check more examples of this for yourself. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to look at the Exponential and Logarithmic Functions Task video for more practice, as well as our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn for more resources on this section. Goodbye.